is Alex Hamer and today we'll be continuing our series on making cloudscapes with the new Skybox node in Houdini 20. In this video we're going to create some Nimbostratus clouds. Nimbostratus clouds are often a thick blanket draped across the sky and often form between the lower and mid layers of the troposphere. This happens as a result of alto stratus clouds within the mid layer thickening and warming along a front of warm air. They are often heavy and dense, usually covering the entire sky with occasional small gaps. This creates an overcast ambience to the landscape, so today we are focusing on creating more ambient weather clouds rather than more dynamic cloudscapes. So what we are aiming to create is a thick layer of clouds with some basic height variation and some noise to create a sort of blanket cloudscape that will give an ambient weather feel to our scene. For the sake of art direction, I am going to have a couple gaps and holes too to potentially have space for sun shafts and sort of to break up this layer. Before we get started, it is important to note that you may need to change some viewport settings around to increase the quality of the clouds within the viewport when we are working at such large scales. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos, you can skip ahead past this part. So let me do that now. You can see here that I just have a simple test cloudscape to illustrate how to do this. Firstly, let's head over to our display options, or you can hover over the viewport and press D. Then navigate to the texture category and set the limit resolution to 512 by 512 by 512. Alternatively, you can disable limiting this. If this is very expensive on your machine, you can set this to a lower resolution, but know that volumes will appear much more voxelized within Houdini. Of course, this won't matter as much once it's imported to a program like Unreal. This is only affecting how it will render in the Houdini viewport. Now, let's get into setting up our skybox. If I first drag in a piece of test geometry, which is a lower resolution model of the Project Pegasus landscape, and add a basic skylight setup, things will be a lot easier to work with, as we can base the scale of things such as noises and such by comparing it to the landscape, which is about 4 by 4 kilometers. You can also overshoot this slightly if you wanted. Next if I create a skybox node, you can see that we have a lot of initial options here. To repeat the basics from the other videos, the voxel size is the size of each voxel within the simulation. This value is likely one you'll play around with a lot, as halving this value will require 8 times the memory and time to calculate. While we're doing the basic setup, we can just set this voxel size to be about 15, to keep things relatively low resolution, so we can make some quick bulk changes and see results faster, before we mess with the in-depth noises and details. This, unlike the texture resolution in our display settings, will affect the voxelization quality of the final result when it's exported. You can think of this as the resolution of our volume. Next, let's set up the bounds for our skybox. For the sake of the tutorial, I just want to cover the entire landscape. So let's scroll to sky setup and set the size and center of the bounding box to be covering our landscape. You can input a bounding box using the third input node, but it's just as easy to set it up within the skybox node itself. Then let's set our altitude and thickness, which set the minimum altitude for the bottom of the cloud and the vertical extent of the cloud layer respectively. These are automatically set unless you disable the checkbox. Large billowy clouds may require larger thicknesses, while smaller wispy cloud layers may only require a thinner layer. For Nimbus Stratus clouds, we want to have a thick layer, so I will set the thickness to be about 1000 and our altitude to be about 375-ish. This is a pretty low altitude, but we don't need it to be super realistic when we are just setting up the sky. You can adjust these values to your needs. So now we have our layer set up. So I want to change all of the weather values to get the look I need. So let me change the coverage slightly, which is essentially how much of the sky is covered by the clouds. So one would be the entire sky and zero would be no clouds. If we hover over this, we can see a more detailed description. So lower values will create smaller cloud patches with less density separated by larger spaces, while large values will create one continuous dense volume. As you can imagine, with Nimbostratus clouds, where we want to have a low hanging, dense, thick layer of rainy-ish overcast clouds, we are definitely interested in these values. So I'm going to increase my coverage to about 0.95. I can also turn up the precipitation to about 0.2, which is just additional control over how much of the sky is covered by the clouds. I can then adjust the anvil slightly, which is changing how much of the cloud spreads out at the top. I only want to slightly increase this to about 0.03. Know that all of these values are very sensitive and small changes have a massive impact on the final result, even if it doesn't look like it right now. 
So now we have a very weird look where our cloud is leaving the bounding box, which is not what we want. So to finish off the basic setup, I can scroll to where we set the altitude and we have a few categories we can mess around with. We can change the vertical profile of how the clouds appear, such as whether they have flat bottoms or tops, which we can see that they do. I actually want to change the top profile and the bottom profile to be about 0.7 and 0.6 respectively. If we hover over the value, we can see that by lowering the second value, the density will fall off faster at the top and bottom. That looks a lot better. We also have the option to erode the boundaries and cut off the corners in case we needed to do this. And there are options for how sharp you want the cutoff to be, but we don't need to worry about it for this tutorial and this skybox. Moving on from our setup, we have three distinct noise functions at our disposal. Billowy noise, which if you've seen the cloud tools video, you'll know that this is a puffy, swelly, billowy kind of noise. Alligator noise, which is kind of a fractal noise and wispy noise, which creates that sort of cotton ball strandy effect. So let's move on to these settings. Again, what I want to create is a flat, thick layer with some noisy height variation. And I also want to have some gaps to let sun shafts through. Heading firstly to billowy noise, I want to set a high element size and I can maybe add an offset as well to get a specific look. This could be about 805 and a 1.1 offset. Next, I want to navigate to the warping tab under billowy noise and enable drooping and set the value to be about six. Drooping essentially drags the noise pattern towards the given droop direction, which I want to set to be doing positive in the X direction and Y direction. So up diagonally and towards the X direction. So this does look like a thick layer we want, but there isn't much height variation yet and still no gaps. So if I enable alligator noise, we can see that things get much more broken up and shaken around slightly. Now this has sort of broken up our layer too much. So if I head into masking, I can adjust the vertical profile. I want to mask vertically how much of the alligator noise is applied to the billowy noise. I want to have it lower at the start and remain about the same and then to taper off and increase about the end. I can also adjust the contrast under value correction to affect how much of the alligator noise breaks up the billowy noise. And this is the effect we're kind of looking for, where we have a large overcast clouds with some gaps for sun shafts. We don't need to worry about wispy noise for this cloud layer, so let's ignore that. You can see that if I set the voxel size to 5 and let it load so we can see it in the highest quality. that we have a good looking result with some height variation and some gaps for sun shafts. There are of course some more options that we could have played around with, but sometimes it's okay to not overcomplicate things. Now let's cover the final options. I don't need to worry about animation as I'm not doing an animated skybox, but the output tab seems to have some interesting controls for us. Let's say that you found this setup to be too dense or you wanted to reduce the density of an overall layer. Within output, you can limit the maximum density and also adjust the scale at which the billowy noise and wispy noise functions apply density changes. Essentially, these controls are multipliers for the density in areas where billowy noise and wispy noise functions are generated. So we've achieved a Nimbus Stratus cloudscape. So if you want to export this as a VDB, it's a fairly simple process. I'll switch back to my task cloudscape from earlier, but know that this process is completely identical for any other skybox or VDB volume within Houdini. We simply drag out from the skybox node and create a node called convert VDB. Then within this node, we want to change a few settings around. We want to change convert from, from volume to VDB. This will change our Houdini volume into a VDB format, which can be used by external programs that support it. Then, just to make things simpler, I don't want to export any fancy stuff, just the density. So I'll change my VDB type to float and set the precision to 32-bit. I also don't need to print the tolerance. These settings can be changed for your needs and there is documentation online for how to use this node in a more fine controlled way. Next, let's create a file cache node. This is what we'll use to export the clouds out of Houdini. Again, we don't need to tweak anything major as there's a lot of complicated options just some small aspects. Firstly, I'd like to enable load from disk at the top. This means that when we hit render, if we already have the skybox or volume rendered with the blue tag in our scene, it will use what it has from that instead of recalculating the whole tree of nodes again when we click the button. 
So this just saves you a bit of time if you're exporting lots of variations. We also don't need a sequence, so we can change the evaluation from frame range to single frame. Finally, we just need to set a name and select a folder. It's also important that the file type is changed here, so you must select VDB. And that's how you export VDBs from Houdini. I hope you enjoyed watching this video on how to create a cloudscape using the new Skybox node in Houdini 20. Feel free to check out some of the other videos within the series where I explore how to create other distinct cloud types with the Skybox node, or showing off all of the new tools and capabilities to do with clouds in Houdini 20. Again, this project file will be available to download in the Project Pegasus page, and you can also find some amazing work to do with Houdini digital assets and procedural generation on the Project Pegasus page on the SideFX website. Thank you for watching.